So, while I was on holiday, <clears throat> ESL announced that apparently new maps are being added to the game again. So, all seven of the current maps are all being switched out for new ones, hopefully very soon. Hopefully very soon. So the DreamHack Finals, the big tournament, the first major tournament of this new StarCraft season that we've got in 2022 is being played on those new maps, while the regional events were all being played on the previous ones. So the problem is Blizzard hasn't updated the actual in-game ladder yet. I hope they will get around to doing so very soon, because that tournament is taking place in like... I don't know, three weeks? <laughs> Sound like that from now? Obviously, you can already practice the new maps in custom games, and that's what I want to go ahead and do today first. I want to go ahead and look at some of those new maps um, as they are currently available in the game. So, most of the StarCraft maps, at least in the past, they got refreshed every StarCraft season, right? These days, it seems that Blizzard is going for the we look at StarCraft 2 once every half year or so type of approach, which is... A little shaky. I honestly wish that there were more frequent updates to the ladder maps. Because it's one of the things that really keeps the game fresh. So previously they would normally remove about four or five of them every season. And then keep some of the maps around. But this time around we have seven new ones. So these are the maps that we're going to get. We're going to get Cosmic Sapphire, Data Sea, Stargazers, Tropical Sacrifice, Waterfall, Inside and Out, and then Moon Dance. Now, if some of those maps ring a bell, it's because I casted a bunch of games on them. What was this? Like the, the Team Liquid Map Contest Tournament? And we like had a look at some of those games already. Yeah, I think some of those are heavy metal songs, because they are made by Maris. And she likes naming uh, some of her maps, I think, after heavy metal songs or something along those lines. Yeah, so one of, the, one of the rough parts about this is that new maps have been made by the community for quite a while already. We've had two Team Liquid map contests and a bunch of smaller map tournaments too, where new maps were played on and tested by pro gamers. And then, you know, we're like, hey, Blizzard, look, we did all this stuff for you. And then Blizzard's like, <laughs> just nothing, which kind of sucks. But supposedly the maps are going to be updated this, this week. Am I surprised? No, I'm not surprised. I'm just really disappointed. That's all. I can probably find Liquipedia articles for every single one of these. Yeah. Oh, I remember this one. Yep. So this one is made by Milo on Fire, which is still a map name or a map creator that, you know, my cat is named Milo. I'm a little, why is he on fire? Anyways, it's okay. I don't remember exactly where this one ranked as far as the TLMC goes. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, so this is the TLMC 15, and then this is the TLMC 16. If I'm not mistaken, I think the maps are probably from these tournaments. Although I'm not entirely sure. Oh, Oblivion. Oblivion was such a good map. I mean, at least the games I saw on this map, in the GSL, they looked pretty legit. But sadly, they never used this as a ladder map. I'm not sure why. It, it, so this is kind of like the rough part, right? So this map, it won the TLMC back in July of last year. <laughs> it's been a while. But yeah, apparently it won the tournament in July last year. So the map is probably made in like January of last year, because it's a pretty long process. And while they did play uh, on this map in the GSL code S, because they replaced, I think... Submarine, if I'm not mistaken, with this map. Um, yeah, they just never use this on the ladder, which is a, a little bit disappointing. Yeah, dude, there was this... <laughs> there was this one bug on Oblivion. Was this... I think it was Solar versus Parting, right? Yeah. So it turns out there was a little bug right over here. I think it was Solar versus Parting. At least that's the assumption I'm going to make. Anyhow, imagine this, right? Solar spawns over here. Parting spawns on the other side of the map. Parting found out before the tournament began that you can actually make a full wall right here at the bottom of the ramp with a single pylon. <laughs> it's really stupid. It's like genuinely dumb. There was a, a little bit of a do that issue right over there with the unbuildable plates and stuff. So you could just do a one pylon contain. <laughs> Who else but Parting? Right. I also kind of like how that was like... A hush hush thing for a while because I know the map was around at that point for several weeks and for some reason 
Barting probably knew of this for quite a while, and for some reason he didn't show it to anyone else until a tournament game. Yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. That was a little bit, uh, a little bit shaky. I would have definitely gone in protest if I was the Zerg player in that particular instance. But. Cosmic Sapphire. So, this one was made by Milo on Fire. Cosmic. Co cosmic. Alright, so this one apparently was tied for 7th and 8th place. I don't remember exactly where I rated it and where I ranked it when I first had a look on this map. When I first had a look at this map, rather, but um, I thought it was really good. This was an interesting looking one. So, main base over here in the bottom right hand corner, and then one over in the top left hand corner as well. So, large main base, looks like there's a little jump up pad right over there. Should be a regular 3x3 three, three three structures wall right over there in the natural. It is a flat low ground, meaning that like roach aggression and siege tank pushes and all that sort of things will, or all those sort of things will be more effective. Just because of the way that like, you know, you don't have to fight up a ramp. But I believe that the rush distance on this map was relatively long because of like the, the loop that you have to make. So you have to go all the way around until like rocks are destroyed in the middle of the map. Um, relatively, like when I first had a look at this map, I, I thought that like the top right was mirrored to the bottom left for some reason, but that's not the case. So, bottom left has a gold base, six golden minerals over there, okay? And then top right has a high yield gas geyser in two locations. So the top right hand corner over here is a little bit interesting. You kind of expect there to be like minerals in that location over there too, but apparently that's not happening. Overall, though, this looks like a legit map, right? So normally TLMC, or yeah, usually this gives a little bit more information. So apparently the rush distance here is 38 seconds. Which is definitely on the longer end. Um, I think shortest maps that we've had, like the shortest rush distance that we've had over the last couple of years is like 33 seconds. I think the longest is probably like Glittering Ashes. Glittering Ashes. Glittering Ashes has a rush distance of 39. So, yeah, even though this looks like a, a medium-sized map, I think because of the layout right there in the middle, the rush distance is actually quite long. So, it's made by Milo on Fire. He's made a bunch of different maps. Yeah, Curious Minds. Is that the only one? Okay, he doesn't actually have his own Liquipedia page. But yeah, Curious Minds, obviously, an excellent map. We've seen a 1,001 games on this map. It's really nice. I've always liked Curious Minds, actually. It's really nice. So, Curious Minds has a rush distance of 34 seconds. Four seconds of difference doesn't sound like a lot, but in early game cheeses, that's like 5% of the entire duration of the game. It's quite significant. You can see, like, win-loss ratio-wise, I mean, it's apparently slightly Zerg favored and Zerg versus Protoss, but overall, yeah, pretty good, right? Nothing too crazy. And despite the fact that this is a relatively small map, it's actually become, like, one of the least cheesy ones just because of the ramp over here. On the natural. So it looks like a good map. Cosmic Sapphire. I mean, I haven't seen a game yet, but initial impressions, very good. Data C. Let's have a look. Alright, so this one is made by Killer Smile. Uh, Data C. Uh, not in that one. Oh, Data C got 12th in the Team Liquid Map Contest 16. Interesting that we have, like... Anyhow. Um, so there's a two-player map by Killer Smile. Killer Smile does not ring a bell to me, or for me. So maybe someone else is familiar with... Reclamation? Okay, Reclamation is a really long time ago, it feels like. Oh, this is a 2v2 map. Oh, no, that's why. I was going to say, I haven't seen this tile set in a map in uh, a very long time, like that background, but it's a 2v2 map. All right. I don't really care about 2v2 maps that much. But let's see. Data C. So, main base. Main base. Natural. Looks like there is a ramp right over there from the natural. And then a couple of different third bases to choose from. I'm not entirely sure why this map ranked relatively low compared to some of the others on the list, but since the main bases aren't in the corners of the map, flight travel distance is definitely shorter. 
So maybe drop play and all that sort of stuff could be a little bit more aggressive. But the dead space over here doesn't seem too short. It's not like you can put a siege tank over there and then, you know, kill structures in the opponent's main base. There do seem to be quite a few choke points. The meta right now, though, is pretty active and not super turtly. I guess this map doesn't really have anything spicy, right? It doesn't really have anything super exciting. But at least my initial impressions, yeah, it looks pretty good. There is a season in StarCraft 2. So the current season is supposed to end July 12th. Honestly, <laughs> with the last couple of map updates that we've had in StarCraft 2, Blizzard has just sort of published it mid-season. Just because I guess they don't have the time or they don't get the time to actually be able to have it coincide with the actual season start. Like, this is the season lock, right? So if, if the new maps aren't going to go live until, like, July 20th, that would be a little too late because by then... Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, the Dream Act tournament will have wrapped up. So I really do hope they decide to publish it, despite the fact that it's going to be mid-season. Stargazers. Stargazers is a Nightwish song. I would listen to it right now, but I can't because DMCA. No, I don't really want to get copyright strikes. Stargazers. Oh, I remember this map. This map has a little star right over there in the center. Look. I think I casted a game on this map as well, if I'm not mistaken. I casted a banger of a game. Um, Stargazers, didn't I? Hold up. You thermal super slow Terran push? Um, did I cast multiples on this one map? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. So this was back in February. Max Pex versus Bly? Right, there were some crazy silly games and strategies on this map. Right, this is Bly going for a gold base first. Because there is one all the way at the very bottom of the map. Because <laughs> of course Bly goes for the gold base in the furthest possible location. Yeah, so these are from the Team Liquid Map Contest 16 as well. And they're made by Maris. So Maris at the time was playing around with a bunch of different in-base expos. And this map has one as well, which is very interesting. Personally, I've never been a fan of in-base expos. Because usually they allow you to kind of just turtle up on three bases. These, however, are not super easy to take, but obviously still relatively easy, right? So this is the main base right over here. Then you have your natural right over there. And then this one, that's the pocket base. It's in the direction of the opponent. And it has like a couple of very small yield mineral fields right over there in the center, as well as rocks right over there. So basically, or, or mineral, mineral rocks, I guess. Anyway, um, basically you can mine these out to create like a, a bit of a strange push. And obviously you can do so as well on your opponent's side. So say you take this as your base, and then you decide to go for like a one base play as Terran, so you go for like a 1-1-1. One, one, one. Then you expand over here, and you mine the stuff out in that direction, and then eventually you send a couple mules on those minerals right over there. You can very easily do a push straight to your opponent's main base. There's some cool, yeah, there's definitely some cool strategic variety that you can do on a map like this. And I, I quite like the, the layout of this one. I think that's what Mark ended up going for, your thermal, in that game. Um, that I casted back then. Where he went for like a super slow push through these bridges and over this area. And it's kind of cool. So obviously, if you do see though that your opponent's coming in and he's going for the slowest of slow pushes, you can just take the gold base over here. And maybe mine that, right? Or expand a little further away. I also like how the... The 6 o'clock base over here is going to be shared. So all of these, like if you draw like a, a vertical line, right? The right side would be player 1 and then the left side would be player 2 or the other way around. Anyways, the base at the 6 o'clock is going to be a shared expo. So even though it's quite far away from other expos, so it's going to be quite difficult to acquire. If a game goes to distance, I think this is going to be the most important base. So a lot of fights will probably happen around this section of the map, which should be really sick. Yeah. Like I just float the main command center to the gold at the start of the game. I mean, golden minerals are good, but not that good. That's going to take like four minutes before you catch it. The command center is going to have to fly for a long time. Anyhow, so Stargazers, made by Maris. Maris has made about a gajillion and one maps. Death Aura, Disco Bloodbath, Everdream, Lightshade, Moondance, Nightshade, Romanticide, Stargazers, and Winter's Gate. Never really liked Winter's Gate very much, but the other ones are all very, very good. Yeah. 
I think we can all agree that all of these are fantastic. You can see how many games have been played on her maps as well. So or, this is tournament matches, right? So this is nearly 23,000 tournament games played on her maps, which is pretty insane. All right. Tropical Sacrifice. Let's see. Tropical Sacrifice. Made by Legon. Doesn't ring a bell for me either. Okay. Oh, wait. Did this map have a different name? Because I, re I remember these bridges in the middle. It was kind of tripping me up because it didn't feel like it was symmetrical and that it was actually mirrored on both sides of the map. But apparently they are. It's just because things are tilted a little bit. It still trips me up when I look at those three bridges. For some reason... Oh, this one has four layers too. Yeah, so that's the main base. Ramp down to the natural. Ramp down to the third. Ramp down to the fourth. Right, okay. I feel like the map also wasn't red. Is there any information over here? Was it really always called Tropical Sacrifice or was this one renamed? I'm not sure. Probably was. Tropical. Um, Tropical. Tropical Sacrifice was 13th over here. Okay. So let's see. Um, so yeah. Someone pointed out correctly that indeed there's four layers on this map. Historically, StarCraft maps have always had three layers. As in like, you know three levels of the playable field this one has four which usually favors more defensive play because high ground advantage is real so main base natural third and fourth yeah so you can take four bases really easily i think when i last reviewed these maps we were still in the previous zerk versus protos meta and i probably didn't favor this too much because you know, a man can only be Void Raid one too many times, okay? Like, at some point, every game that you play, you already can can just close your eyes and see the carriers going straight for the throat, right? You can only play so many games. And if someone's just sitting back the entire game along with four bases and they can make one death ball and you can't kill it, um, that's not very fun. Nowadays, though, since we've had that patch a little while ago, death ball play from Protals, not nearly as possible. Or not nearly as viable, rather. So it's... Probably not as much of a concern. Although I think there's a lot of Protoss players that are trying to make that work. Nice has been finding a pretty good way to, you know, get up to that Sky Tulls army again, which kind of sucks. Anyhow, I'm not entirely sure if I like four layers on a map too much. Although it's fun to have, like, one map to mess around with that. I'll have to see how this one plays out. 30 seconds, or 37 seconds rather of rush distance. That's very significant. Where's the Overlord Pillars? That is a very good point. Stargazers doesn't have one either, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mapmakers have slowly started, like, nerfing Zerk indirectly. By, like, removing the pervert pillars and all those little features and stuff. It's, uh... Yeah. I mean, there's a big-ass pillar right over there. But then, obviously, the middle area is going to be kind of hard to spot. Looks like a pretty good map, though, overall. I loved Waterfall. I remember Waterfall. Um, I think that's the one that won, right? Yes, Waterfall won the TOMC 16, which is great. This was a really nice looking map. So I think it's made by Superu Man. Yes, Superu Man is a guy who made a whole load of maps as well. Yeah, this map is very pretty. I'll show you in a sec. So it has 33 seconds of New rush distance, which is not really that much, but... Okay, so Waterfall is made by Superu Man. Who made Beckett Industries, Cloud Kingdom, Eternal Empire, Golden Wall. Probably the best Legacy of the Void map. Controversial opinion. But I really liked Golden Wall. Not so much to play on. But Golden Wall has made overall, I think, the best games. This was such a fun map. Purity and Industry, which sucked. Turbo Cruise wasn't that big of a fan either. And then Waterfall <laughs> Zen. Man. Super Man has made some controversial maps, okay? Cloud Kingdom, mostly loved. Eternal Empire, basically Cloud Kingdom 2.0. Zen was a bit confusing. Turbo Cruise was also a bit confusing. Purity and Industry was... I mean... No. 
I, you know, I wasn't a big fan, but it was okay. Beckett Industries. Beckett Industries was actually pretty good. I actually liked this map quite a bit. One thing that made me dislike this map was Blizzard accidentally leaving it in the map pool for like an extra four months. They meant to remove it, but then they never did. And it took them four months to correct their mistake, <laughs> which is really stupid. That honestly hurt the reputation of Beckett Industries. Like if Beckett Industries could sue, they probably would, man. Because this map was actually pretty legit. But um, then I had to use one of my vetoes on it because nobody would play it anymore. Waterfall was cool. Because it's got a river. Look at that. Not a canal or anything like that. It's got an actual river. So there's a waterfall up there. And then also I think a waterfall in the bottom right. Yeah, there's like two waterfalls. If you look very closely at these four pixels, you can see that there's a waterfall there. So apparently there's like little crossings. In the middle of the map, three of them. So these are like the bridges on this map. Yeah, you can literally go and touch grass. Yeah. You can literally go and touch grass in the game. So you don't even have to go outside of your home anymore. Anyhow. One feature I really like on this map is the fact that it's got these... Glass sections. Where you can actually like see through. And like, you know. It's just pretty. It's not really a feature that we normally have in a game of StarCraft, but this is kind of like a, you know, like an old Protoss base, and they kind of fought against each other, so I think this is like the Purifier skin versus like, what is this, the Iron Protoss or whatever? And they, um, yeah, got overgrown by nature and stuff. It's it's pretty, right? It's a good looking map. Um, Layout-wise, looks very good. I would say the most interesting feature is probably this really big wall section. So this is all a high ground, and I can already imagine siege tanks gunning at literally everything that <laughs> that comes across those bridges. But uh, some high yield gases too. Yeah, it looks good, right? I don't think there's really anything on this map that uh, looks out of place. 33 seconds isn't a very long time. So that's maybe something to keep in mind. Definitely a map where you can play relatively cheesy. Inside and out. Uh, that does not ring a bell. The map was initially... Ah, okay. The map was initially... For, okay, right. This map was originally called Frost Giant. <laughs> they renamed it. Oh, no. Why did they do that? What's wrong with Frost Giant in a StarCraft game? Like, what's the problem with that, guys? Blizzard didn't like the name. Frost Giant in their... Hmm. Maybe ESL renamed it. Yeah, probably also a trademark issue. 100% also a trademark issue. Oh, yeah. I thought this map was really cool, but it wasn't one of my favorites because it wasn't anything fancy. And I thought there were, like, some maps that had more interesting features, but I couldn't really find any mistakes or, like, you know, mistakes on this map at all. It's very colorful. So one thing that like bothers me a little bit is that it's quite literally ice, right? Like on top of lava. <laughs> Which, you know, I mean, technically it could be, but like, really? We're like a floating sheet of ice on a bunch of lava? Anyhow. Um, large main base. We have a little pervert pillar over there, but that's definitely not a good location. Because, you know, things in a main base can just kill it and get high ground vision. After 35 minutes, everything melts and both players die. I would be... So, I know that people have suggested this for years. But I would be 100% okay with bases just disappearing at a certain time frame. Like, say at some point on this map, the third base melts away. The 6 o'clock expansion is no longer access accessible at the 17 minute mark. Because that's when the lava rises. I would be so okay with that. But, yeah. Pro gamers, you know, aren't. For obvious reasons. It'd be fun though. Anyways. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Yeah. So relatively small amount of bases, I guess. But Donation nothing too crazy. Confirmed. What about Frost Big Boy? Ice Behemoth? Chill Dihydrogen Monooxide Mammoth? Great suggestions, man. They decided to go with Inside Out Dynamite. What about Flash Freeze? I feel like Flash Freeze LE would be really good, dude. That would be a banger. 
disappearing bases would definitely not work balance wise. I get that. I get that. Anyways, very nice looking map. I think I saw a game on this map too, and I didn't really have any issues with it whatsoever. It looked really good. And then the last one called Moon Dance. There's apparently an album by Van Morrison, also called Moon Dance. Is that a reference? I don't know. It's made by Maris. Probably. Moondance LE. Okay, yeah, so this is the other map that Maris made that also has an in-base pocket expo. So we're gonna have two maps with pocket expos. Um, I don't really like that, if I'm being honest with you. I think it would have been better to have one of the crazier looking maps. One of the more experimental ones, rather than the ones with, you know, pocket bases, because we haven't had any pocket expansions in a long time. I thought Aftermath was, for example, really good. I mean, Moondance was also really good, don't get me wrong. But now we have Stargazers and Moondance, which both feature a pocket expo. I think it would be more fun if we had, like, another feature, because, you know, there's a bunch of things you can do. Anyhow, uh, so this one is, like, a proper pocket base. So... This one's super easy, right? So this is the main base. Then this is the natural right over here. And then you can expand backwards. Like this is the easiest to take third base ever. The only downside for this in-base expo is that it's only got one gas geyser. So I'm a little concerned that this is going to be like Protoss heaven. Because Protosses don't really take any more than four gases right now anyways. <laughs> Which is a new development, I guess. Where they just go heavy, heavy gateway. Yeah, you can only have 12 workers there on minerals rather than, uh, you know, 16, but... Yeah, it's an interesting base. Definitely gonna create some variety. Although I can imagine a lot of it will just be a passive start, you know? A lot of it will be players taking this just super early and then not really doing anything for the foreseeable future. Um, I'm usually not a big fan of maps that promote more passivity, and this seems to be a map that promotes a lot of that. Um, obviously... Remains to be seen whether or not that's actually going to be the case, but I would have rather liked to see maybe a... Um, like, for example, uh, this map was fantastic, man. Aftermath was really cool. Really pretty looking map, too. This one was made by Depressed One, right? Yeah. This one also had four layers, but you had, like, rocks over here at the golden base, and then, like, speed-up circles. Like, this one had the speed-up circle base. Remember that one? Where, like... Minerals would be returned and stuff ever so slightly quicker. There were some cool things on this map going on for sure. I would have liked to see this probably more so than uh, the one we got, but that's okay. Who gives a shit about Loco's opinion anyway? No. Interestingly enough, though, quite a few of the maps that we did get are relatively lowly ranked in this list. I wonder if that's primarily due to just conservative map pickings. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, rank seems to be kind of arbitrary here. Like, we have players play on it, and we have, like... Treadmill was an interesting one, too. Treadmill, I would have loved to see this on the ladder, but again, I can see why it didn't, didn't happen. So, look at this, right? Main base, natural third, right? And then look up north. These are all speed circles. <laughs> That's why it's called a treadmill, because you can go from here to, to the other side very easily. It's got a highway, man. This is cool, right? It's actually cool. It's very fun. But for obvious reasons, pro gamers don't really like practicing on maps that are way different than other maps just because it's very hard. But, you know, if our goal is to try and determine who the best player is, I guess it's not a bad idea to have a variety of maps, but... Yeah, Zerklings can get from one side to the next very easily. I think I saw a game on this map where, like, siege tanks were sieged up in the bubbles. And Zerklings were on them, like... <laughs> Zerklings were just, just right on there. In a, just one shot. Battle of Altaris, right? We've seen that one. Yamatai. My favorite thing about Yamatai was the color scene. And, like, just the, the color scheme, rather. And, the you know, the choices. is Like, it's, it's like lime green together with pink. Not really a set of colors you'd imagine would work well, but, um... Not bad. This one I thought was really cool. Aqueducts. Aqueducts also has never been used. This one doesn't have a river. So this is also made by Superman, by the way, who did make Waterfall. So apparently he was experimenting with a bunch of water. 
Anyways, this one is more like a canal, right? Like an aqueduct right over here. Looks a lot more man-made, but also pretty cool. Like, imagine battles right over here in this section. So you have this base taken, and then, like, you know, you could probably have siege tanks hitting some of that on the other. It could be cool. Or flying units. <laughs> Actually, now I'm thinking about it a little bit more. What about proxy Tempest right over here? Or just any Tempest right over here? It's going to be very hard to reach that. But, yeah. And then Oblivion. Obviously, Oblivion was fantastic. I thought Iliad was a cool map, too. Berlingrad. Berlingrad got 15th? Really? All right. Yeah, so now we just have to wait until Blizzard, I guess, puts those on the StarCraft 2 ladder. Because now playing on the old maps feels a little bit pointless. Right? Because these are not going to be used again very soon. New subscriber detected. What's going on, Pepper on a Biscuit? Hey, Logo. You talked about Rainer's Protoss yet? I have not. But Rainer did send me a replay. Like two days ago of a game I really have to cast. I'm assuming he's the barcode protos in this particular game. He said this is one of the craziest games. And he plays a lot of games. So I, <laughs> I will go ahead and cast this. Sometime later. Anyhow, um, so for the very first time, we're going to get seven maps switched out. A little bit risky, but I think choices for the maps are mostly conservative. Nothing all too crazy. Um, there's a good chance that we'll be playing on these maps for at least half a year. So, yeah, it's going to be fun, man. I haven't played a lot of ladder recently because, you know... You can only play so many games on every map before it gets a little bit tedious. A little bit boring. But it's going to be very fun to play on these new ones. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. So, Joey tweeted this, right? Out of nowhere. So, I responded saying, don't play with my feelings like this, Joey. Because he just, like, states this suddenly. I'm like, okay, where, where did that come from? I have no idea. Now, I do know that nice username works with a lot of people in the StarCraft community. So, you know, there's probably some value there, but you never know for sure. And then Dimitri uh, responded to my tweet saying, I can confirm that. Now, Dimitri, for those of you unfamiliar, he's the tournament manager for StarCraft 2 for ESL. So basically, uh, the professional scene of StarCraft 2 these days, which, yeah, <laughs> has a little bit of credibility. I mean, if you've watched any of the pro player streams recently, which I know you guys don't, right? Because you only ever watch my stream, right? Right, guys? Right. right. Anyways. Um, you may have noticed that a lot of them are practicing on, you know, custom games and, and custom maps and stuff that, you know, <clears throat> may have already indicated such a thing. It's kind of interesting how Dimitri has sort of become like the spokesperson for StarCraft II's eSports. And he's kind of like, guys, it's happening, I believe, but Blizzard also hasn't really said much to me, so I hope it's happening. But, like, it should be soon. 